STV, votre télé. One PM on STV TV viewers. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on this edition of the One PM English Newscast on STV. Another death. Uh, another death recorded on our roads. Over 10 persons reported dead and several injured in a ghastly road accident involving General Voyage and heavy duty truck around Bumyebel on the Yaoundé Douala Highway Monday. The first edition of the Forum for Cameroonian Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises has been launched this Tuesday morning at the JICAM head office by the Minister of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises. Those were our top stories. Ladies and gentlemen, tell you Good afternoon and thanks for joining us in this edition of the 1 p.m. English newscast on STV. We start this newscast by firmly condemning and denouncing the aggression and brutality on uh, STV journalists at Santra Voyage Yaoundé this Tuesday morning. In their duty of collecting information after the accident uh, involving General Voyage and heavy duty truck last night around Bumyebel at the Yaoundé Douala Highway, STV reporters in Yaoundé were brutalized and their cameras were seized by officials of General Voyage, a situation which STV strongly condemns. And as we all know, over 10 persons are reported dead and several others injured in this accident that occurred last night. We shall be bringing details of this in our subsequent editions of the news. Over to something else, stakeholders in the Congo Basin Forest are meeting in Douala in a three-day meeting to look at the solutions to the problem of wildlife which affects forestry in the region, like poaching that is considered as a huge problem as far as the Congo Basin is concerned as well as the entire continent. Let's now listen to one of the participants of this uh, meeting. We are here at the expert meeting of the Organization for the Conservation of White Fauna in Africa. It is an organization which was created since 1981, but since then it hasn't really functioned well. Uh, it hasn't really meet its goal that were set at the beginning. So um, recently uh, the ministers of the countries that formed this organization, Central African countries, met and gave an assignment to Cameroon, the Minister of Forestry and Wildlife Cameroon, to revamp this organization. So, um, if you look at the current events, um, there is serious threat on wildlife, you know, um, especially on big mammals. Outside the case of elephants, elephant has become a problem. If we don't really put more effort, uh, such an organization is very, very, very welcome. Um, to fight because it's focused, this organization is focused on anti-poaching, uh, transboundary anti-poaching uh, strategies, to put up strategies uh, to fight against poaching. So, um, you know, elephants, the ivory, illegal trafficking of ivory has made um, the situation very, very serious. So the For a more protected, efficient and competitive small and medium-sized enterprises in Cameroon is the theme of the first edition of the Forum for Cameroonian Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises launched this Tuesday morning at the JICAM head office by the Minister of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises, Laurent Serge Etundi Ngua. The prime aim of this forum is to devise strategies on the role of small and medium-sized enterprises in the development of the country and methods to better arm small and medium-sized enterprises on how to be more efficient and competitive on the international scale. Politics in this newscast, the head of state President Paul Bia is back in the country and many hot fires are awaiting him as he resumes duties. Our reporter Laina Tapaji now evaluates or examines some of these hot fires on President Paul Bia's table. After spending close to 40 days out of Cameroon with the main agenda being Cameroon's participation in the 72nd General Assembly of the United Nations in New York, President Paul Weir has returned home Saturday, October 21st. 
with regards to the recent happenings in the country, it is clear that updates of the more than one year long Anglophone crisis is a major file he has to address after his welcome back reception at the Yaoundé Simalene International Airport. The March of 22nd September in the English speaking regions, one of its kind in history, the first October demonstrations of the population and the outing of senators and members of parliament, controversies on the number of deaths recorded have all taken place in the absence of the head of state and reports of his collaborators he will have to study. Paul Bia will also receive home updates on series of local bomb explosions in the northwest region and that which occurred at SEDP in Douala littoral region. In the last 30 days, political parties, civil society activists have made several calls for an inclusive dialogue which has been projected as a lasting solution to the ongoing Anglophone crisis. Going by the political scientists, Professor Evis Ngolengole, an inclusive dialogue can be conducted by the state and the responsibility of designing the agenda and participants lies on the shoulders of the state leader. President Paul Bia has been circled as the only strong man that can put an end to the current socio-political tension. His next move, after studying reports of Anglophone elites, is what Cameroonians will have to see at the appropriate time chosen by the number one man of the nation. Meantime, the Boko Haram crisis in the Far North region is still a preoccupation of Paul Bia, and measures to put a stop to terrorism is a study file on his table. Peter Mafani Musonge, head of the Southwest Peace Mission Delegation, has assured the population that their problems have been tabled to the government. He was speaking at the end of an evaluation meeting in Mboya. Klai Sekowe has more. Heading the Peace and Dialogue team, Peter Mafani Musonge, amongst others, assigned to the Southwest region of Cameroon to talk with the population, sample their opinions, as well as jotting down their problems recently rounded off their talk. I know that uh, the head of state uh, instructed that uh, delegations go to the northwest and southwest regions to, uh, on a peace mission to the people and to give them a, mission, a, a message of hope uh, and that is what we came to do. During this tour, whereby the peace mission team to the southwest region of Cameroon got in touch with traditional rulers, traders, educational and religious authorities, trade unions, amongst others, some problems raised by the population, as disclosed by the head of the delegation, will be tabled to the higher authorities. Uh, there are problems about roads, access to some localities, which is quite difficult. Uh, like in Libya, Lem, like in uh, Tubangem, and so on. So roads are an issue. In some cases, we have uh, matters of educational infrastructure, schools which are dilapidated, uh, that sort of thing. Some schools too have been burnt by some of our own people themselves, and they need to be rebuilt. So there are things like that. With their peace mission marking an end, the population was highly appreciated and the meeting evaluated as fruitful. General, the meetings went very well, were very peaceful, and the people were very grateful that we came to see them and talk to them. Meanwhile, with this delegation heading back and tabling the problems raised by the population, many hope that this will bring a lasting solution to calm down the long-term resentment in the two English-speaking regions of Cameroon, which has brought devastating effects on the country at large. The mission of peace and stability pushed forward by elites of the Northwest and Southwest regions, instructed by Head of State President Paul Bia, and today, Tuesday, October 24, 2017. Peter Mafani Musonge has revealed the people of the Southwest regions, as Southwest region, are dissatisfied with the poor road condition over there and do not approve of a secession. 
the delegation of Southwest elites on mission to preach President Paul Bia's goodwill message of peace to the people of the region have toured almost all the suburbs. The head of the delegation, Peter Mafani Mosonge, a few days to the end of the mission has revealed that the absence of quality infrastructure like roads is amongst the top priority of the region. Uh, if it is just the problem of, uh, in my point of view, uh, all of those rallies, all of those claiming cannot be put in life with uh, this kind of violence. The way to carry out information is not uh, uh, good thinking. It is because of uh, the partiality of uh, those persons uh, who have received the mission to collect those information. If we want to know the reality, it is better in my own position, in my own point, point of view, to uh, mission uh, some uh, Cameroonian who are not uh, n known as uh, a member of this political regime. Peter Mafani Mosonge has also observed that the majority of the Southwest population is not in accordance with the idea of secession. It can be true that uh, uh, the majority of uh, population even in southwest and even in northwest are not uh, uh, in the way of secession but they 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 they, 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 they are just uh, uh, put in light the the situation of discriminalization uh, against them Tuesday, October 24, will mark the end of the mission of elites to the northwest and southwest regions, which began on October 15. The feedback will be channeled to the President of the Republic for his reaction. Something else in this newscast. Victims of the Seca train accident who are to benefit from the 1 billion CFA funds presidential gesture have been given three months to compile their documents and to regularize their situation. The list of beneficiaries and the various categories were made known in a communique from the Secretary General at the Prime Minister's office. Details with John Osama. The 1 billion franc CFA presidential grant given by the head of state, President Paul Bia, to the victims of the 21st October 2016 Ezeka train crash will soon be awarded to them. This comes following the ad hoc committee set up by the Prime Minister Philemon Yang to award this gift to the victims. The committee is charged with identifying the victims and defining the modalities of classifying the victims according to the injuries suffered. Meanwhile, Having taken note of the conclusions submitted, the head of government has ordered the publication of the list of beneficiaries of the assistance in three different categories. The first category being survivors who have sustained body injuries and who can show proof of a total or temporary disability. There will also be the beneficiaries of the deceased and exceptionally beneficiaries of missing persons. The beneficiaries of the presidential grant, whose names appear on the list, have been given three months to submit complete files at governor's offices, embassies and consular offices, which will be sent to the prime minister's office. Opposition political parties are divided over the aborted rally of the Social Democratic Front Party in the Little region over the weekend. And it's a kind of money them has rubbish Jean-Michel Nietzsche and his allies for not sticking to uh, government authorities. Details with Peter Simpson. Not all opposition political parties have a positive appraisal of the banned SDF rally of October 21, 2017. A heavy security apparatus was deployed in the economic capital to crush any attempt by Jean-Michel Nincho, who had vowed to defy the ban of the deal for Douala One and stage the rally. Though pockets of protesters were spotted in some parts of the economic capital staging in March. If the SDF, CPP, a faction of the UPC and Manidem take pride in at least staging a showdown, and he said a canne of Manidem is not impressed. To him, the objective was not met. L'objectif de la marche, qui était la mobilisation la plus large pour apporter notre soutien au 
compatriotes de la zone anglophone, cet objectif n'a pas été atteint. Donc la marche n'a même pas eu lieu. He argues that if the initiators had anything positive to take home from October 21, then it is simply relative and out of touch with the main target. Il paraît qu'ils disent qu'ils ont paralysé la ville, qu'ils ont démontré que le régime de Paul Biya était antidémocratique. Ça, je pense que la majorité de la Camerounais le savent, qu'ils ont démontré ça à l'objet international. Mais est-ce que c'était là le but de cette manifestation a canal means that the SDF misfired and blew up a golden opportunity which will have turned the dicey issue of public demonstrations in favor of opposition political parties in Cameroon. Attempts to reach out to all the main actors of the October 21 march, including Jean-Michel Nincho and Jean-Robert Wafo of the SDF and CPP's Kawala, were futile. None of them could pick up their calls. Let's go out of the country with the VOA. The family dog is Hugo Alexander's best friend. The six-year-old has moderate functioning autism and an intellectual disability. His mother, Misha Alexander, says getting Hugo out the door is a struggle almost every morning. My day-to-day -day life with Hugo is incredibly taxing. Um, it takes a lot of energy just to get him ready for school. As the mother of an autistic child, she's always felt she needed to make other children and teachers aware of his condition. When Hugh was in preschool, I made flyers that I put into all the pigeonholes for all of his peers um, and their families to understand what was up with Hugo. When Hugo started elementary school, she felt she had to educate even more people about the condition so they could better understand autism. And I thought, that's when I'm going to write a book and I'm going to help bridge that gap so that there's more transparency between disabilities and typical children. His name is Fergus. Alexander wrote Fergus and Delilah, a children's book about a child who's a little different and trying to make friends. The book is designed to be used at schools and at home. The message I hope to spread um, is that we all need to be inclusive make different the norm. The book has received positive feedback. I haven't actually seen any um, in my 10 years in the industry. I haven't seen any sort of really good comprehensive resources that are available to children, young children in particular. Raising awareness about autism by telling an interesting colorful story might be the first step toward breaking down barriers and making life easier for Hugo and kids like him. For writer Fiza El Masri, I'm Faith Lapidus, VOA News. In sport, Victoria United of Limbe, UMS de Loom, FC Yaoundé 2, Young Sport Academy New Stars FC, Douala Athletic Club, Stad FC de Banjoun have all qualified for the quarterfinal stage of the Challenge Cup of Cameroon. A recap of their victories with Henry Wala. It was a weekend full of shock and surprises as the battle for the 2017 Challenge Cup of Cameroon took center stage, perhaps one which has even made the tournament more interesting as current Division One champion Edings Podola Leke was shown the exit door during post-match penalty shootout 5-4 by little-known Douala Athletic Club involved in the Division Two championship in Cameroon's domestic league. Who would have imagined that Victoria United, fondly known as Opopo, a one-time pride of the Southwest region, struggling to pop up the soccer scene in the country, could eliminate Feche FC, a club which finished the just-ended season on the fourth spot with 51 points. 2-0 was the scoreline that sanctioned the clash. However, newly promoted club into the Division One Championship, FC Yaoundé D saw off Bonaberry FC from the race. Young Sport Academy had an easy ride over St. Peter's Football Club from Limbe in a 2-0 thriller to cross to the quarterfinals. Not, not at all because, uh, you know, St. Peter, we saw them playing here last time against Puma. It was not easy. So we took our, all our time. But uh, the main problem was that uh, they postponed the match from Saturday to Sunday. We prepare all things for Saturday. And you see, just a few hours before the match, they say that the matches have been postponed. So it was not easy. The last game of the eighth final round, 
pitting bamboo toes do Buddha against Africa's Podo Yaounde is scheduled for this Tuesday, October 24 in Douala. Only thereafter, the draws for the quarterfinals will be conducted. Before we draw the curtains of this edition of the 1 p.m. English newscast on STV, we STV firmly condemn and denounce the brutality on our team of reporters at General Voyage Yaoundé this morning in their duty of collecting information after the accident involving General Voyage and heavy duty truck around Boumyebel on the Yaoundé Douala Highway, our reporters in Yaoundé were brutalized by officials of General Voyage. That brings us to the end of this. STV, votre télé.